good, man? It's going down. This is Donnie Houston Podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. We got a very special guest today representing Face Mob, representing Coffee Brothers, man. Hey, KB, what's going down? What's going on, man? What's going on with it, man? Chilling, man. What's new, man? Hey, man. Shit, working, man. Back at it, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah man. For sure, for sure. Yeah. I mean, it's been, it been a minute, you know what I'm saying, since people seen, you know, what's been going down. I mean, you got some new music in the works, right? Yeah, new music. Got a new album coming out February 5th. Keep going, you know. Back at it, man. Been a long hiatus. But, hey, we here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure, for sure. So, man, how you been uh, making it through the pandemic and everything, man? Man, I've been making it, man. You know, just, it's kind of like a, a gift and a curse, man, because, you know, I, I was able to work on this project. At home, chilling, got his, you know what I'm saying, family, you know, kids, get to know your kids better, you know mm. what I'm saying, you, you know, like, working, you know, it, it, it sat you down, but it really was, a, it's a blessing in disguise to me, though, you know what I'm saying, so, I was able to knock this project out, and, hey, still working. Yeah, still working for sure, and I mean, like you say, I mean, you've been in it for a minute, man, just talk about you know, even before the face mob thing, just coming up in the A, man, how that was back then, man. Man, coming up in the A, man, it was um, like anywhere else, man. It was, um, you know, like I'm, I'm from a small town outside of Atlanta called Tarleton, Georgia. Um, if you ever heard of the artist Bo Hagen that was signed with yeah. Bill John. Yeah. Me and him from the same, well, me, we like family. I, I don't like saying, like, we, we would raise this family, you know what I'm saying? He's like a cousin of mine, but Tarleton, Georgia is a small town, about 90 miles south of Atlanta. I was raised down there, you know, in my younger years. I went to school down there, first, second grade, you know. Um, third grade, I moved back to Atlanta. My mom, we was um, in East Atlanta, Zone 6. And, um, you know, just moving around, you know, doing the same, doing, doing the average kid shit, you yeah. know what I'm saying? When, when, did, when did the like rap thing start taking off though? The rap the, the rap thing <clears throat> took off with me when, um well I like uh, Run DMC, you know, uh, The Message and all them songs. For I, sure, for I sure. was liking all that shit, right? But what made me want to rap, my cousin Chris, he was in the Navy and he was up in um, boot camp up in Virginia. So he came home after, um, you know, the, like training and shit. So he had a tape and on the tape he had uh, Eric Beers for President. Mm. And so, man, I begged him to like when, cause we, when he, he was about to go back. I begged him for that tape, man. Like, please let me have, let me, let me leave that tape here. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And so, uh, I played that song like a million times and had um, my melody on it too. But that every bit of president one that got me. And I tried to write my first rhyme then. That was what, what eighty six, I guess, eighty seven. Somewhere came now. out. Yeah. I tried to write my write my first rhyme then just because of that song. That 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 inspired me to rap. It would be for president. Yeah, but I mean, talk. I mean, talk about just once you get older and start kind of like moving around because you had some connections to the Dungeon family, right? Right. My brother Big Keith, he went to school with um, Timo Cujo and Gip and all. They went to Maze, and so um, once I came up and I was starting rapping, like I'm, I got to be around seventeen at this time, sixteen, seventeen at this time, and this was like right when, right when Outkast first dropped. Good and Mob haven't even came out yet, you know. So he introduced me to, you know, Timo, Cujo, Rico, the whole the whole dungeon and shit, right? So I used to go over to the dungeon, Rico do beats and shit. Let me listen to me, let me rap up, rap to the beats and shit, you know. You know what I'm saying? Just you know, just going by there trying to get in where I fit in at, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. But you know, they were, they were so deep over there already, you know what I'm saying? They had Outcast, they had Good and Mob, had E J, they had Cool Breeze, they had Backbone. You know, with just so many, you used to always tell me, like, man, you know, like, you can get down, but you're going to have to wait. So any given day, you just go over there, and there's just a bunch of them over there. Everybody yeah. just working on records. If I go over there, either Rico over there or Ray Ray and Pat over there or EJ over there working on something, any given, any given day, you pop up over there, you can see anybody. You know what I'm saying? Dre, Big Boy might be over there, you know what I'm saying? In any given day. And like I said, I, I, I had the privilege of just popping up over there, you know what I'm saying? Because of my brother, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, uh... So I did that, you know, but before then, even even before then, I, I can take it back. Um, I was in a talent show with, uh, it was me, I was in a group called the Ivor Court Zoo, me and my homeboy Donnie, and we was in a talent show with uh, a group called the East Point Chain Gang. Now the East Point Chain Gang had Big Gip, you know, Cool Breeze, 
my buddy Mac Town, Big Chief, all of them. You know what mm. I'm saying? So I, we was doing like talent shows with each other and shit. So I, I knew of them, you know, but then that was like before the dungeon, you see what I'm saying? Organized noise, you know. But, but then once I found out, once I went over there and started seeing them, you know, me and Cool Reed, we still like this to this day, you know what I'm saying? We we, we really just click, you know what I'm saying? So after he seeing me, like, damn, you know, we just, we just clicked, man. And it was just, you know, to this day, we still cool. So that's that's where them Dungeon Family ties come in that though, my brother Big Keith. Yeah, but I mean, after that, like, talk about because what did you meet? Uh, was it Face at a concert or, or something like that? Yeah, Face at a concert. Yeah, a club. It, 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 it was a concert at a club, club um, a club called The Gate. <laughs> a club called The Gate over in the Cater and shit. So uh, it was the Ghetto Boys. And they was are, you, are you still in this group at this time? Or like, what are you doing? Nah, this at this time right here, I had split. I had just, me and my homeboy had just split up. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really just by myself at this time when I met him. Just like 96. So... Like I said, they on the, um, they had just dropped. They was about to drop the resurrection, or just dropped the resurrection. But they on the, they on like a little run, a promo run or whatever. It was the Ghetto Boys, Face Mob, UGK, um, Fifth Ward Boys, Mac Maul from the Bay, a couple more guys. You know what I'm saying? So I met him, and so when I met him. He was in the back, and there was some guys trying to sing for him and shit. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, what made him like take a liking to me when the guys were trying to sing, I pushed them niggas out the way, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> pushed them niggas out the way and started rapping and shit. So like, okay, nigga shit, go ahead, rap. You know, you like he was liking that shit, you know what I'm saying? And so he like, all right. So then by this time the room started just getting crowded with niggas trying to rap. So he like, yeah, he's like, he like he he, he like, I right, big nigga. He said, like, get these niggas. So I had to battle them to like about 21, 22 niggas at one time, you know what I'm saying? Just down the line. No oh, shit. Going down the line. Some of them was coming back, some of them was scared, some niggas wasn't scared. I even had to battle, rest in peace, my homeboy, Big Omar, you know what I'm saying? He he was in line. I had to I had to I had to get him too. One, one nigga I, I grew up with, you know what I'm saying? Big Omar, rest in peace. But uh about 21 niggas, man. And so he was like, shit, you go through them, you can go with me. And so shit. Rest did what you had to do. <laughs> yeah, I did what I had to do. Yeah, rest is history. Man. Yeah, so boom, you jumped down face mob. And this is to replace Smith D because he was going through his thing at the time. Yeah, yeah. when, it, when, when yeah. I talked to him, he was like, uh, you know, uh, Smith D had just went to prison, you know what I'm saying? So he was like, you uh, fill in for him and then we'll, you know, do the uh, knockout this. Because they had, they, had, they was about to drop the first face mob. I see, I'm, I'm on the second. The, they've got two face mobs. Out of them. It's the other side of the law, the first one. And um, silence is the second one, so I'm on the second one. But uh, so I, I came out. We worked on the um. Well, we didn't immediately work on the Face Mob album. You know, uh, he was working on the Untouchable album. Hmm. And so uh, we came out here. I was only out here for a couple of days. Then we drove to Cali. He worked. He was working on, on the Untouchable out in L.A. So do you sign immediately, or you just kind of just? No, I, don't, down? I don't sign immediately. I'm, I'm just. Like I said, I came out here, he working on The Untouchable, and um, basically he was like, you know, it's coming, you know what I'm saying? Just just stick around. So, like I said, we went to LA, and uh, we was out there for about, shit, six months, man. And, um, I mean, how was that, man? Because you going over there, coming from Atlanta to go on rap a lot, and like prime rap a lot of years, man. Prime rap a lot. It, it was, it was um, surreal because I was a big rap a lot fan anyway, you know what I'm saying? One of my favorite groups on rap a lot was the Hard Squad. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, of course the Ghetto Boys was, but I'm just talking about like, you know, uh, Gangsta Nip, you know, I I was on all that shit, you know what I'm saying? But uh, to come out, to meet Face, you know what I'm saying? Then the rap for him, and my first time rapping for him, I get on with him, you know what I'm saying? That was shit, you know, a lot of niggas don't make it their first time, hmm. so just, just off me just rapping freestyle. Like a lot of that shit, like I said, when I, when I was battling them, them niggas, I wasn't rapping nothing I wrote. You know what I'm saying? Some of it was some, of it was some shit I wrote, but I couldn't remember this shit because I was just so, in the moment, I, I really just freestyle and just, you know what I'm saying? So when I came out here, I really didn't meet a lot of people because like I said, I was over at, uh, I was out of his house and shit. And then we was here like maybe two days and then we 
immediately went back to LA. And so when I went to LA, like I said, we was out there for about six months, man. And when I was out there, when I was out there, I met Too Short, Ice Cube, Be Legit, E Forty. You know, what I'm saying dads and corrupt. Yeah, kicking it or y'all recording or what y'all doing? We recording. Like everybody coming to the studio, Enterprise Studio. Everybody coming up to the studio to get on because you know all the all the names I just named is on that out. album except E40 and um, Be Legit. I think they just came up there to kick it or whatever. I, uh, but Daz is on the album. Too Short is on that album. Uh, corrupt didn't make the album, but um, all the names I just named, most of them was on the album. They they weren't coming really to kick it. They were really coming up there. You know the vibe, see face. You know what I'm saying? Work on some tunes. You know what I'm saying? Are you kind of tripping, or are you just like man? I was tripping. Cause like I said, shit. You know. <laughs> I mean, you just named some names, bro. You yeah. talking about short, cute? Hey, come on, man. <laughs> man, listen. Well, like uh, I can remember we in the game room. It, it's two. It's two entries to Enterprise. It's the, it's the door that everybody come to. Then they got the front door right here by the game room. Don't know how to come to that door. And um, door that boom, 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 boom. So I'm in there, it's just me and somebody else in that shooting pool and shit. So I open the door, and this motherfucking E-40 and be legit. Oh, so <laughs> that fucked me up, like, damn, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm, you know, this is 96, these niggas been out. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, God damn it. So I let them in, they cool as hell, you know. Man, be legit, we still, to this day, we still cool from 96 to now. We still hmm. shot with up. He's supposed to have been on the album too. But um, then like I said, Daz came through, short, Came through. I don't say I got a shout out short because um, from that time in LA to when I got back to Atlanta, he let me come to his house and like record for free. You know, like he he can be on the road somewhere. I call him. He like, man, go over there, man. I have um, Wayne let you in, Robert. You know, saying record you, whatever. Like, no money, no nothing. Just go over there and whatever I you know record, man. You know what I'm saying? That's real. Just off of that first initial meeting from LA. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you know it was. It was surreal for me being out there, man. Like I said, then, then I'm out there with Face, you know, that to see him, how he do this shit, you know what I'm saying? Because he real private like that. You really ain't going to get a chance to get in there and see him magic like that if you don't know him. Like what, what are you learning at this time? Because, I mean, you coming into the game and getting to watch one of the best, you know what I'm saying, like do at, his thing. At that time, I'm learning, like, you know, because, uh, like, I used to go in, well, this come from like having no money like that, you know what I'm saying? I used to go in and like uh, record the song all the way down. One take. First verse, hook, you know, just all the way through like that, you know what I'm saying? But I don't want to give up none of his sauce, but you know what I'm saying? Um, watching him record, it showed me like I don't have to do it like that. I can do it like this right here, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, he real private about that shit. But, I learned, I, I learned a lot, you know what I'm saying? Uh, breath control, you know, just. And then I can I can give up this right here, though. He don't, um, like, he might do a song. Like Mary Jane, it's like two other versions to Mary Jane. Hmm. Like, he'll, he'll write a song and do it, and then he'll, he'll, he'll write two more versions to it, and the best one will go. So a lot of his songs. Whole songs. Whole songs. Like, a lot of his songs that you hear, it, there's other versions out there in, in the vault somewhere. A lot of his songs, you know what I'm saying? Like, I learned that right there. Like, a lot of people go in the studio and just write a song and just lay it and that be that. He was a perfectionist. He didn't do it like that. Sometimes, he, if he feeling that shit, he'll do it again. He'll do it again and, and he'll go lay it again. Like, he might lay it, r ride to it, and go lay it again. Like, he, he, he ain't just gonna just give it to you one time he 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 gonna perfect it. I learned that. Mm -hmm. I I just write a verse or a song and just be led and be done with it. But he, shit, he might hear another beat. Okay, damn, this shit sound better to this beat. Like I said, Mary Jane is it's a couple more versions to Mary Jane out here. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Well, not out here, but you know it's in the vault somewhere. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? So I learned that from him. Man, okay, so. What, okay, so y'all just recording in LA or what, what are y'all doing in LA? Just recording, just recording, just hotel studio, hotel studio, no kicking it, just hotel studio. So y'all come from back out there and then what y'all what start okay, doing? Okay, we come from back out there, he, he finished the album, we come back here, and then I go back, I go back to Atlanta. And so I'm not signed, and so uh, the album about to come out, and so uh, he go, do his little promo run. I'm at home. I get a call from Big Chief. You know Big Chief. Hey man, 
Lil J want to talk to you, man. I'm like, damn, what the fuck I done did. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So like, man. Uh, had you Jay, met him before or this was your first time? Yeah, I, had, yeah, yeah, I, met, I met Jay because he came out, you know, while we were working on the album. I met, mm. I had met him before, but this is why he was calling me, though. He was like, man, he need for you to, uh, he wants you to write, uh, help write Bushwick album and shit. So he's like, man, I'm finna, I'm finna, I'm finna send you out, I'm finna send for you, bring you out here and shit. So that's how I got back out here, you know what I'm saying? So I was um I was writing Bush with the next album. So I, I might have wrote Miami like six songs, but then you know that it didn't it didn't pan out. But there are six songs somewhere of mine with me that I've wrote for Bushwick. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I got back out here. And by the time I got back out here, Face was coming off the promo tour for the Untouchable album. And so from that day on, it was like okay, now it's time to. Uh, he was, he started on my homies, and so it, in the midst of working on my homies, we working on my homies, Devin's first album, Face Mob. So that 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 that's what was on his agenda. Hmm. Untouchable, Devin and Face Mob. So now we working on those three projects and shit. And so, uh, like I was telling you, on the um, Untouchable album. I'm on like maybe six or seven songs. I got the most songs, features on that album, whole project out of everybody. You know, that's why you hear me so much, you know what I'm saying, on that album because he was basically setting it up like My homies, you mean. My homies, I mean, yeah. not untouchable, my homies, yeah. He was basically setting it up like for Devin, then Face Mob, and then uh he dropped the G to a key and then me and DMG. So I was just by this time I'm just bouncing around Studio A, because he had a studio over here, um, Knockhard Studios, um, Studio A, Studio B. I'm in there with Devin, Face Mob. So how is it, because I mean, how do you, because I mean, clearly you and Devin, y'all link up and y'all have a real, you know what I'm saying, chemistry, you know what I'm saying? How was it when you first meeting Devin and how did y'all end up like getting some type of shit? Okay, so I got to back up. When I, when I came up here, when I came out here the first time, uh, when I was telling you, um, before we went to um, L.A. Cali, right? Uh, Face was having this house built, so um, he was they was he was living uh, with his mother-in-law and with his wife at the time. So he had a condo over here off of, uh, what, what, what was that over here? I think it's Buffalo Speedway over here. So in the condo was a uh, um, partner Rico, which is still still my good friend to this day. And so Face dropped me off over there, introduced me to Rico. And so um, I think Rico went to the store somewhere. So the doorbell rang, ding. So I go to the door, boom, open the door up. It's fucking dead. <laughs> that fucked me up. Cause like I told you, all squad was you like, like my favorite right, right, group. Right, yeah. right, right, right. So like, he's like, yeah, man, what's up, man? And then nigga had some chicken and waffles and shit. <laughs> had some chicken and waffles and a 12 pack of beer. So he's like, man, you eat chicken and waffle? I'm like, man, I ain't never had no chicken and waffle, bro. Like, we don't, we ain't do that in Atlanta at that wait, time. Wait, 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 wait. But see, the first time I had chicken and waffles was in Atlanta. How long ago was it? Like it was in the nineties. In the nineties, at, Gla at Gladys Knight. No, Gladys Knight when when nine when the nineties. Gladys maybe Knight like, like maybe like ninety six somewhere between ninety six and ninety eight. Ninety six. Yes, yes sir. <sighs> okay, yes, sir. I, I hadn't I hadn't had it. My first time having chicken and waffle was out here with Devin and shit, right? Mm. So and you know she got that shit from fucking you know Roscoe probably, but uh, so. Eating the chicken and waffles and shit, you know what I'm saying? He he find up one, so then he like um man um, they want me to do a solo album. But I'm like, man, what the fuck up with the art squad? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He like that kind of threw him back. He like, man, damn, like, you know about the art squad? I'm like, hell yeah, y'all my favorite group on rapper like, you know what I'm saying? Like, where them niggas at? You know what I'm saying? You need to y'all need to do a motherfucking art squad album. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He, he was like, Yeah, yeah, you right. And so uh he wanted to go get them niggas and shit, so we ended up kicking it. I ended up, I ended up clicking with the Art Squad, like out of everybody, like me and the Art Squad. Like they called me the honorary fourth member of the Art Squad. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But that day he let me hear the hook to um, do what the fuck you want to do. He didn't have the song yet. He just had that hook part. He had the beat and the hook. He had two beats from Inno Joe. He had that one and he had another song called I Can't. Um, I can't quit. Mm -hmm. That was on the dude album. He had those two beats, so he had the hook for "Do What the Fuck You Want to Do." He like, man, he he sung that shit. I like, Phew. 
that motherfucker out of here, you know what I'm saying? So he didn't have enough, I can't quit yet. He just let me hit the beat. I'm like, that motherfucker jamming too, you know what I'm saying? So fast forward, we go to he, we go to LA, you know what I'm saying, work on the album, because he, he was out of LA with us too. LA come back, and then it's time to work on his shit, you know what I'm saying? So then that's when he started like, filling in the blanks, coming up with this shit. Cause like I said, he might be have a session. I might have a session with the face mob. Then face might be in there working on my home and shit. I'm in that motherfucker. I'm just all over that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So I ended up being on five songs on Devin's album and about like six or seven songs on my homies. And then we work on the face mob. So I was just, I stayed in that motherfucker, man. I ain't want to go out and party and hang and shit. I just want to just, you know what I'm saying? Work, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Man, Devin, that's how we end up getting cool like that. But so every time me and him do a song together, or me, him, and the R squad do a song together, the motherfuckers come out banging, you know what I'm saying? To the point where everybody like, man, y'all need to do an album together. You know what I'm saying? Like it just just something about that chemistry, man. We can go in there. We might can be talking about something. And then that shit just turned into a song or something or just whatever. That's know? what I was gonna say. Like, so, tip, talk about songs like like uh, Sean with that pussy made for and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, how y'all come up with that type of shit? Sean with that pussy made for uh, DJ Domination, Domo, uh, Face DJ. He did the beat. Now, uh, Dev heard that beat. It was Gangsta Nip's beat. The Gangsta Nip got a song of that beat. Hmm. Sean with the pussy made for. But you know, <laughs> Dev got the song. Got the song. You know what I'm saying? So we listen to that motherfucker, and you know, we always make freestyle or whatever. You know what I'm saying? About just you know what I'm saying? Just in that moment, just playing around. We ain't got no topic or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I I, I like BBWs and shit, right? <laughs> so, so uh. We just freestyling and shit, and then he might have said like the first little couple lines in the song, and then from right there we just go. We went in the vocal booth and just sat down on the floor and just came up with that shit, man. Had the headphones on, just rapping that shit. Okay, just, just bouncing off each other and shit. Mm, 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 mm. Hmm. Man, we, we laid that shit, man. Like, Get the fuck it done, Combs. Con, that shit was hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We were literally sitting on the floor in the vocal booth Smoking and drinking and just writing that shit, just freestyling back and forth. We came up with that song like that right there, you know what I'm saying? Then by the time we came out, Dumbo was like, damn, y'all come up with something? Like, yeah, like, when they laid that shit. And when we laid it, it was like, we knew right then it was gonna be something, you know what I'm saying? Like, that show what the pussy made for, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, <laughs> it's a classic. <laughs> everybody be asking like, you know, it's some truth to that shit, you know what I'm saying? In, some, in both of our shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, Taking experiences from women and just putting it in that, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> it was a little chick I had out here, right? You know what I'm saying? So the one part out to my put my foot, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That was a true story, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, so he like, man, you know, me and Devin, we becoming some wild shit. So you know, man, say that shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fuck that shit. <laughs> but yeah, man. Um, every time we go in there, though, man, it. it we come out with a banger, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, either me, him, me, him, and Jug, and Rob, you know what I'm saying? You know, it'd it be like that, you know? But I, I, click, I click with everybody on Rap Lot, though, man. Uh, Fifth World Boys, Menace Clan, uh, three, Big Mellow. That was like, you know, R.P. Big Mellow. He he really took me up under my wing. Because, see, as um working on the Face Mob album, but then, you know, like, um, it was a couple members in the group, you know, like, couldn't get the business right or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Because you know there was a female in the group, then you had Shy Ray, mm -hmm. had DMG. You know, DMG was working on the solo album as well. So in the midst of that, I was kind of like at a little stand, well not, I wouldn't say a standstill, I was just so eager to work, because I'm out here to do the face mob, and I know if we don't do the face mob, I'm gonna be stuck with my shit. So I started the group called The Gorilla Click, which, uh, I, I I brought my buddy out here from uh, from Atlanta, um, Trey T L, and my partner Big Slim, and my homeboy Mr. Shawty. I brought him out here, and so at one point, man, I had damn near twenty niggas in this group. It was, it was the guys I just named: Big Mello, the Menace Clan, Jug Mug from the Hard Squad, uh, guy from the North Side named Mad Dog. 
it was about 20 of us, man. You know what I'm saying? We was like, somewhere there's some songs with us, with me, Big Melo, Menace Clan, Jug, all of us just banging out records every day. You know what I'm saying? So then um, Big Chief came and said, man, you got to narrow this shit down. You know, there's too many of y'all. So it, it just ended up being four of us. You know what I'm saying? It was me, my boy Trey Tiel, uh, rest in peace Jamal, face cousin Jamal, and the guy named Manchild. So it was just ended up being those four. But, you know, uh, so I started working on the Gorilla Click album, and then by the time we got deep into that, the face mob was back up. So I had to, I had to drop that and get back on the face mob, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, that was what I was here for. So we, we ended up doing the project, and then, you know, some other shit happened, and then, you know, so. Mm. Man, do you have any, uh, like, favorite times from your time, you know what I'm saying, on Rap A Lot and everything from back then? Whether it be like working on Devin albums or something that happened on you know on the My Homies albums or some tour shit or Man, my favorite times uh going on the road, man. Doing shows and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like uh like me and Devin sitting on the floor in the in the vocal booth coming up with that song and then going out on the road and then motherfucker rapping that shit word for word. Mm. That kind of shit. Like, damn, like man, we just came up with that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like the, the the road is like my favorite times, man. Um, creating the music, you know what I'm saying. Being in there, like I said, um, being in the studio and then three two walking in there, hmm. you know what I'm saying. Uh, Nip walking in there, you know. So like I said, all these guys, man, you know what I'm saying. Uh, Phil Ford boys, you know what I'm saying. Uh, just meeting them and coming in and, and, and getting the chance to work with them. Beto, you know what I'm saying. Beto took me under his wing, you know what I'm saying. Um, Man, it, it, it was just creating the music and going on the road was like the, the, the fun times with rap a lot, man, you know. And then like on Lil' Jake used to have these sessions in the studio. Lil' J will come over there, man, and everybody, he might have um, freestyle cyphers and shit, you know what mm. I'm saying? Like me, Faze, Devin, Menace Clan, DMG, Big Mello. Everybody. So he'll call y'all over there and have these sessions? Every, we, we might probably be already be over there, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Or he'll call some niggas up and he'll be back there, beat playing and shit, you know? It, it, it's like cypher some, going. Cypher yeah. going, you know what I'm saying? Like, shh. Man, I, I, I can imagine, I, man. I, I wish it was like um, Instagram shit back then to get that shit, you know what I'm saying? Cause like, when nobody recording that shit, man, but I'm talking about niggas, niggas going at it, you know what I'm saying? Like face. Like some bringing on shit though, but just cipher, you know what I'm saying? Niggas just going back, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And like shit, you know, them kind of that shit right there. Like you know what I'm saying? We, you, we you'll never get them times back, you know what I'm saying? That 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 stick out to me too, you know what I'm saying? You spoke about Big Mello. You saying with him uh, taking you in, talk about some, you know what I'm saying? You may remember like with him. Big Mello, man. Um, one thing I said about him, like I said, um, he comes to the studio. He used to be that early, man. Like. Mellow bitch studio like seven, eight in the morning. It's like he's like, man, look, I treat this shit like a business, man. I treat this shit like work. You know what I'm saying? He like, um, I come in, I work, I go home to my, my my family. You know what I'm saying? He like, this is how you gotta treat. Him and Devin talk with that. Devin actually say that, but he did that. He showed me that. Like Devin to be up, get his kids ready for school, drop them off of school, come to the studio to work, leave, go pick them up from school, go home, fix fix dinner, you know what I'm saying? Like, I learned that. So, Big Mello, he taught me that. And so, like I said, when we used to be on the road, he used to, like, just took me on his wing, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was real musical. Like, he could sing Al Green, <laughs> damn, Frankie Beverly, damn, anything. You know what I'm saying? He, he was just, the conversation was to have, man. Like, it used to be deep. You know what I'm saying? Just sitting on the road, sitting in the back of the bus, everybody in the front of the bus. Me and him in the back of the bus, just chopping it up, you know what I'm saying? Just talking about life. He loved his wife and his kids, you know what I'm saying? He, he talked about his wife and his kids, man. Like, he, mm. that's all he talked about, you know what I'm saying? Like, he just, it's all he talked about. But uh, he was a protector. I can remember one time down in, um, I think, Daytona, Florida, man. It got ugly. But, shh, Big Mellow, man. Mm. We... All I'm gonna say is we, we we here today, you know what I'm saying? Because of Melo, you know what I'm saying? He, mm. he ain't play. He was, a, he, was a, he was a protector. He if he if he fuck with you, he fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? He loved Brad. He loved Face. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And so if 
you out here with face, then nigga, you 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 with Brad, you with me. That's how it was. You know what I'm saying? So big mellow man. Like then, so that, that's what I'm saying. When I did the gorilla click shit, he was all for it. He was there every day. Like I said, seven, eight in the morning. He he was there before me. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, he might already have a hook done, a hook and the verse done or something. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, Big Mello, one of the guys I clicked with, man. Yeah. That's dope. So you saying okay? So Mello would just be with y'all on like what is he's like face mob too? Or is he just like rap a lot too? On face, going like we go, go out and do uh, face shows because mm. we didn't we didn't never tour for the face mob. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like when face face might be out on tour and shit. You know what I'm saying? We might be on the bus. That's what I mean. You know what I'm saying? Back then, shit, when it come to entourage, shit, Face was one of the ones who had an entourage. It was maybe 10, 15 of us on, getting on the plane, 20 of us boarding the plane. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we used to be deep. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to think now, back then, you know, Face was the nigga when it came to, like, rap. You know what I'm saying? So he, he had the big entourage and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it'd be me, Mello. Devin, DMG, you know what I'm saying? Warren Lee, Big Mark, Fat Joe, Homer, B Dub, Chief, Dumbo, uh, whoever else you can name, you know what I'm saying? Man, was Jamal. Deep. God damn. I'm sorry, like I said, 10, 15, 20 deep. It, it, it just depends. Like, if we do a show here in Houston, you already know how they're going to go. Mm. You know, but uh, on the road, man, we were just deep. And like I said, Big Mello was. Uh, was a protector out there, man. Besides, uh, you know, Big Mark and uh, Warren Lee and B Dub them, but like Big Mello, he was a. Uh, I clicked with him like I don't out on the road. You know what I'm saying? Like he he, he calmed me down on some shit. Like I say, I'm I'm fresh new, you know. I'm out there with a chicken with my head cut off. You know what I'm saying? Hey, hey, hey KB, come here, man. I'm holly shit. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, mm. that's how it was. What you say, chicken with a head cut off? What's some of the things like when you first got out there that you had to kind of like adjust to? Uh. Okay, like say when you you on the road, you know what I'm saying? You meet a chick, chick might say, yeah, I, um, well, we going back to my house. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, hell no, you don't go back to nobody's house. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that kind of shit. You know, like cause, uh, I'm new. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you don't know me, what, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like he just taught me to to an etiquette. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like. Smoking with niggas and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, I'm be smoking with everybody, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, no, you know, you might be smoking shit, but like, watch them niggas roll that shit up. Don't yeah. take no blunts, nigga. All got already got rolled up and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, just keep it, keep it mutual, you know what I'm saying? Some niggas be on some other shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, he just he taught me a lot, man, when it comes to like to the road. Not not only him though, but you know, like Devin and all them too. But Mello was more like, you know, him and Warren Lee was more like, you know. On our ass, you know what I'm saying? Warren Lee, he on our ass, that big bro, you know what I'm saying? Hey man, what the fuck you doing, you know what I'm saying? Him, <laughs> big Mello and Warren Lee, with them, them with the guy that do that shit, keep keep us in line on the road, man. Like, hey man, y'all can't be doing that shit, we we'll do this shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm new, I'm young, you know what I'm saying? Girls everywhere, you know, shit, you know. Just, hey man, you can't do that shit. Yeah, 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 so, shit, you, uh, you say after a while though, man, you kinda just fell back from the music and everything. Yeah, after a while, man, like, uh, like I said, I had my my son and my daughter. And so I just went back home, ATL, man, raised my kids, you know what I'm saying? Working, you know what I'm saying? I started driving trucks and shit, you know what I'm saying? And just, just doing the family thing, you know what I'm saying? Got married, you know what I'm saying? And just doing the family thing. And so mm -hmm. uh, I still would like uh, every now and then, like, um, Slim Calhoun, that's another one of my good friends and shit. Him and Bizarre from D12, Pastor Troy, you know what I'm saying? They would, you know what I'm saying? Hey man, come give me a verse or something. So I would do a verse here and there on, on they shit, you know what I'm saying? But as far as me, I wouldn't work, I wasn't doing no KB shit, you know what I'm saying? I would like do a verse for them when they call me, cause like they friends, you know what I'm saying? Like they'll call when when it ain't about music, you know what I'm saying? Check on me, you know what I'm saying? Like friend, like real friend shit, you know what, mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Cause I, I ain't, I ain't got that many friends in this music shit, but I, I can say they, they they my friends, you know what I'm saying? Along with Devin, you know what I'm saying? But uh, so my mom passed in um, February, February 5th of last year, 2020. 
you know, but like right before she died, you know what I'm saying? She used to always like, man, you need to get back to your music, son. Like, like why, why you give up? You know what I'm saying? Like, don't give up. You know, like your kids, your kids a little older, you know, like, like do your music. Like, why you stop doing your music? You know what I'm saying? And so when she passed, like I said, she passed February. It really wasn't on my brain to do no music, but you know, the pandemic, the, um, the pandemic hit. So now I'm at home, stuck, and so now everything hit me. So now I'm like, shit, I'm out of well, damn. Do some music. I'm not even thinking about the album. Let me just do some music. Mm. So shit, I ordered me some um, equipment, ordered me some studio shit. I just started recording. And the next thing you know, shit, I'm like, man, this shit coming out kind of dope. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I called Devin. I said, call Pastor Troy. Call all my, all my rap partners and shit. And they were like, man, yeah, man, we, we got you, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So then they just started just putting it together. Just putting it together. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, Pastor Troy, we went to um, Memphis. We got up with DJ Squeaky. He, he did like five five tracks for me. Uh, Mr. Lee, you know what I'm saying? Mr. Lee 713. He sent me a couple of tracks. Uh, Blind Rob sent me a couple of tracks, you know what I'm saying? Um, I just started just knocking them out. And so I got 20 songs, 2020, 20 songs. But I'm a little late though, because I ran into some uh, sample clearance issues. It was supposed to drop last year, so. But you know, like I said, by it being my, uh, the death of my mom, her anniversary, February 5th, I'm gonna just drop it on February 5th. So I had uh, 20 songs for 2020, man. Mm. Yeah, I got a uh, big rule, big rule from the dungeon. I got uh, Devin, I got Slim Calhoun, Bo Hagen. Uh, who else I got on that? Bizarre from D12. Uh, who else I got on that man? Uh, Low Life from the Fifth Ward Boys, Smith D. Um, I got, I got, I got, I got some more people on there, man. Uh, I got a lot of family on there, like my nephew Zay. I got my little brother Champ. I got my brother Green Socks on there, you know. I got my goddaughter Megan on there, Copious Green, you know. I got a, I got a lot of good features on there. It's a nice album, man. Nice body of work, man. Everybody loving it. Everybody, you know, enjoying it. Who, who all done heard it, man. So, mm. you know, I, I, I feel good about it. Yeah, and that's gonna be out on everything on it. It's gonna be out on all platforms, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, February fifth. Uh, Devin dropped the same day too. He dropped on February fifth as well. So we dropping on the same day. So you know. You, might you gotta see a, get both of them, you know what I mean? Gotta, gotta get both of them. So, you know, yeah. you might see a tour if they, if they can open up these venues. You might see a tour coming with me and him, you know. But uh, that's all I've been doing, man, just working. Like, I done already started on another one. I'm, I'm working on another project as well, as we speak. Yeah. I just, you know what I'm saying? Keep it going. The name yeah. of the album is Keep Going. Keep Going. And um, I just dropped a single called Keep Going featuring Devin and Tony Mac. That's out on all platforms, got the video out, and the album is called Keep Going. So, That's what it is, yeah, man. man. That's what it is, I appreciate you coming through, man. Hey man, look, I appreciate you, brother. I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan, man. I sit back and watch you, man. You have all the legends on here, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. I, and you blowing up. I see them numbers growing too. I'm like, yeah. I, <laughs> through the pandemic, I seen it. I just watch it like, dang, you know, through the pandemic, you find shit like, dang, okay. I just been out subscribed to you, followed you, you know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. He, you know, so man, I appreciate it, man. It's an honor having you, man. Like I said, you know, I I came in here rapping the verse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you that one day at a time. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, That's yeah. one of my favorites, man. So I appreciate it, man. Uh, oh, you want to get your social media and shit before we get about it? Oh, yeah, uh, social media, uh, Instagram at the real KB Zone Six. That's uh, D A Real KB Zone Six. Uh, Twitter, the real KB. I think it's Zone Six, but Instagram you can find me. Like I said, I got uh, the new single that just dropped. Keep going, featuring Devin the Dude and Tony Mac. That's out on all platforms. The video out. I also got a uh, single, PNW. That's out on all platforms. Album dropping February 5th on all platforms. Um, be on the lookout, man. Follow me on Instagram. Just follow the movement, movement man. Uh, hit my, my YouTube page, subscribe. And um, I'm about to drop some shit. Matter of fact, I'm shooting a video next week. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to keep the content going, keep the music coming. Yeah, you're going to hear a lot more from me, man. Already, that's what it is, man. It's Donnie Houston Podcast, KB. We out.